Anchors Up sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Meh. But never mind any of that. Um, let's, uh, Kyle, it's, it's Penn State week. I highly recommend we waste no time. Let's get right into it. Let's get to know our enemy. All right, the Penn State Nittany Lions. No, Jared, we are not going to talk about what is a Nittany Lions. <laughs> We're just going to talk about the the football team that is Penn State, who is 6 and 0, 3 and 0 in the Big 10, a top 10 team in the country here. And Jared, is this is this the best Penn State team that we've seen in the last 6 years? Uh, this is James Franklin's best team, and that would go back, I think, further than six years at this point, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How long that has he? It's been a while at this point. Um, I want to say he's like what eight, nine years at Penn State at this point. Oh, uh, since two thousand fourteen. So this is his uh, tenth tenth season. Well, this did he his... coach the 2014 season? Yeah. So, so this is his 10th season at Penn State. Okay. Um, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, <laughs> we don't. We, four, we don't have to count. We don't have to count on the podcast. Okay. I, I know. I know. I know. It's. I know. It's your your str- not your strongest suit, Jared. But what's that? math (laughs) I'm good at math I'm just not good at math on the podcast because I'm the one that has to carry the weight around here and it's hard to think and talk at the same time Kyle so Penn State here (laughs) uh, good on offense um, really good on defense on paper here yeah but Jared, but let's look at who they played. Let's look at who they've played, Jared. Yeah, it's it's West not Virginia. Good West Virginia. West Virginia, not 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 a good West Virginia team this year. No. Delaware. Illinois. Iowa. Mm-hmm. Northwestern. Yeah. And the University of Massachusetts. Yeah. It's uh, not a murderer's row. Um, it's almost as bad as Michigan's out of conference. I mean, if we're talking, I know it's 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 way better than <laughs> Michigan's out of conference. It's just not. Uh, Michigan hasn't played anyone nearly as good as West Virginia. Oh, I'll just say that. Yeah. Although UMass is about as low as you can go, and stay. I mean, I was about to say and stay in the FBS, but that's an insult to FCS schools. I'm sure many of which could beat Massachusetts. Yeah. All right. Well, can't talk about Penn State if you don't talk about their quarterback, Drew Aller, who should have been their starting quarterback last year. But I digress. I, I, and I, here, I, he, here he is this I, this year. Uh, very well. Doing very well. 65% completion. Uh over 1,200 passing yards for the season, 12 touchdowns, and zero interceptions for the year so far. Zero uh, interceptions, which is impressive. I mean, I, I don't care who you're playing. I, I, I mean, by the way, like, we can say what we want to say about, like, Iowa, for example. That's still a good defensive team. Like, Iowa's mm-hmm. still a good defensive team. Like, we, 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 we shouldn't we understand what their offense is and has been for a, uh, I was going to say a decade, but it's been longer than a decade. Um, we, we know who Iowa is, uh, but their defense is still a very good team. Uh, so to have thrown zero interceptions to this point is uh, very impressive. Yeah, I know. Definitely very, very impressive. I was trying to see what, uh, I can't find it offhand here. I was going to see how many turnovers in total Penn State has for the year. I want to say it's like three. Obviously, all all from the uh, 
from fumbles here, but but yeah, it's they, they definitely take care of the ball here, but obviously they don't haven't played anybody close to Ohio State here. The defense, the offense, it's going to be a totally different battle playing Ohio playing Ohio State this this upcoming weekend. While Ohio State's played. They they played some some pretty good teams here. Uh, obviously, yeah. Notre Dame, uh, Indiana has a has a decent uh, defense from what we've seen I, at least the start of the year. <laughs> yeah, I, was, uh, you know, I I put that a lot on Ohio State starting a lot of new people more than I do on Indiana. Although Indiana played Michigan close um, mm-hmm. for a first half. Yeah, and then, then and then Ohio State also played played uh, against two uh, very pass happy uh, offensive Western Kentucky and Maryland too, and they, they seem to do pretty well in those games, only letting up ten points and seventeen points to each of those teams as well. So, speaking I really of like Maryland, State's ch- speaking of Maryland, like it's you know we had a very similar conversation in regards to Maryland. We we look at all these rankings which are incredibly impressive. Um, what happened? I, I had other rankings in the show notes. What happened to this? Um, incredibly impressive. The, uh, I have to hold on. I just pull up the web page real quick. Um, look at their overall statistics. Points per game, seventh in the country. Uh, offensively, second in the country defensively. Yards per game, 47th in the country offensively. But Kyle, defensively, number one. They're only giving up 204 yards a game. And, like, I can keep going through these. Uh, and we had a similar conversation with Maryland, and we said, yeah, but the schedule, yeah, but the schedule. But a thing that we didn't acknowledge and should have acknowledged uh, was that, you know, despite the schedule being bad, they were dominating those teams that were on the schedule. And again, the schedule's bad. It is what it is, but they're taking it to those bad teams much in the same way Maryland was doing. We're now seeing, you know, we have yeah. been seeing Penn State doing. Um, yeah, I mean, give it, give them credit, give them credit. They're doing, they're doing exactly what they need to do here. But like I mentioned before, this is a totally, totally different beast altogether here. So yeah, uh, opponents yards per play, they're number one in the country. Uh, defensively on third downs, they're number nine in the country. And by the way, offensively, hey Austin offensively on third downs they're number 23 in the country rushing statistics are uh good offensively but devastating defensively number two in the country uh yards per rush uh opponents uh yards per game number two in the country uh and you might say well you know Penn State's been getting up on teams big early in games, Jared. It makes sense that uh, their rushing defensive statistics would look so good. Well, um, on the defensive side, or on the defensive passing side, and by the way, that's fair. Uh, I mean, the teams have passed on them more than they've run on them, but not by much. Not by much, yeah. It's it's almost 50-50. Um Opponent completion percentage, 51%, number one in the country. Opponent's yards per pass attempt, 4.9, number one in the country. Opponent passing yards per game, 137 yards. They're allowing 137 yards per game pass uh, against them, passing-wise. Uh, number mm-hmm. one in the country, in case you had to hear me say that. Um, tur- uh, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe they're, uh, 
you know, every team has their weakness. Maybe they give the ball away too much. <laughs> Number three in the country on turnover margin. Number nine in the country on takeaways per game. Number five in the country on giveaways per game. So what's this all saying, Jared? It's it's saying Ohio State has a hell of a game coming up. That's what it's saying. Like if, <laughs> if you were if you were waiting for me to do a yeah, but I mean we already talked about the schedule. Yeah, completion percentage will go up this week. I mean, ideally, Ohio State uh, takes it to a lot of these averages this week because uh, if Ohio if Ohio State only throws the ball. 137 yards this week you're gonna lose uh, that's not a bold prediction at all <laughs> uh you're gonna have to break a lot of these averages if if you're gonna win this football game yes yeah. i know i know austin all right other play other players obviously um singleton singleton goes without saying their uh best running back at Penn State here, 362 yards, six touchdowns already and has already over 100 yards reception and a touchdown for the season. But they like to give the ball also to Creighton Allen and most likely just because of Penn State getting up a lot and Creighton has gotten the ball a lot more too. So you may look at it like, oh, oh, Allen has has more yardages than Singleton. What's going on here? It, it, Penn State schedule. And then, and then look at look at Penn State just giving Allen more opportunities to to run the ball, and then you look at other players too. There's a lot, lot of players who've gotten a chance to run the ball for Penn State as well. So, but we're going to see Singleton. We're going to see number number ten out there, and definitely a force to be reckoned with. He's very very good running back who can take it to the house if you're not if you're not covering your your gaps here. Uh, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a big challenge for this Ohio state defense here. Uh, really like Aller, really like Singleton, uh, really like their, uh, their wide receiver, uh, Lambert Smith as well. Uh, by far their best uh, receiver on this Penn state offense, over 400 yards already, 31 catches, uh, three touchdowns. The next best, uh, player here or players are the tight ends here uh, Johnson and Warren who each have 16 catches each yeah um lots of weapons like there there's not a yeah but coming like this is going to be a tough game um and you know you're you're stuck wondering how much of this is real as the best team they've played so far is Iowa. And it's not close. For the record, it's not close. Like, Iowa was at least ranked at the time they played. We can have a conversation about whether they should have been or not, but they were. Um, it's... It is what it is. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's hard... And again, like all the numbers, all the stats, all the tendencies, all the metrics, uh, they, they tell a great story for Penn State, a, a story, you know, that you, in theory, if you wanted to look at and get real scared as an Ohio State fan. Mm -hmm. um, but it's... And Iowa's offense is abysmal. Yes, Iowa's offense is abysmal, but I still like Iowa's defense, and Penn State put 31 on them. Uh, and even if Iowa's offense is terrible, holding a team to zero points, as Ohio State learned last week, uh, is still difficult even when the offense isn't very good. Um. You know, Ohio State has more yards per play than Penn State. Awesome. Uh, completion percentage, nod to Ohio State. 
Third down conversions. A nod to Penn State, but it's not as big of a gap as you might think it is. Uh, red zone scoring, another statistic in which Penn State is number one in the country. Um, yeah, opponents' yards per play, a significant edge to to Penn State, 3.2 versus 3.9. And again, we are just wondering, how do we weight this? Penn State's not played anyone as good as Maryland this year. They play Maryland, but they haven't played them yet. Let alone Notre Dame. Or even or even Indiana. They haven't even played Indiana yet, too, to try to even... Uh, try to have some sort of comparison as well uh, i mean yeah just from a comparison standpoint yes i like i'm not going to say indiana is better than iowa because i don't think that's true oh no yeah no. okay just okay making sure we're on the <laughs> same page there um so historic historically when ohio state plays when ohio state plays penn state here we usually nine usually talk about pet game winning streak Six. Six, six game, game winning, winning streak. Six game winning streak. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State's had Penn State's number recently. And yep, and ten, 10 of the last 11 as well. 10 of the last 11. Uh, it, it, it has to be pointed out that Penn State got real close. Real, real close mm -hmm. and made it a, a tough game a bunch of times along those 11 games. It hasn't been easy. Yeah, ten, well, ten for eleven's fantastic, um, well, but it hasn't well, been well, easy every step along the way. Yeah, it's more often than not uh, in those last eleven games. It's it's been like a one score game. I see a um, I see a twenty to fourteen game, thirty one to twenty four, twenty four to twenty one, thirty nine thirty eight, twenty seven twenty six. Yeah, it, they they tend to be pretty close games here. And the the spread here is four and a half. That's that's a good number. It's a good number. Three three points for the home team there. So one and a half point favorite for Ohio State. Okay. Yeah. Um. So so one one thing when it comes to this Ohio State and Penn State matchup. Uh, no, I didn't say rivalry, just matchup. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the we always talk about the the uh, Penn State defense. Just how good. Traditionally, Penn State's defense has been here and how they've always given Ohio State a run for their money in terms of trying to score points here, giving them different looks here. And I don't expect this year to be any different here. So looking on this defense here, it, this defense lives on their linebackers here. They have, a, they have four linebackers that they – Heavily rely on here. Jacobs, DeLuca, King, uh, Kobe King, that is, and Carter. All of them have um, played significant parts in the season already. Uh, Jacobs leads the team with 23 tackles. Uh, DeLuca has an interception and two forced fumbles there. Uh, Carter has an interception. Uh, Kobe King has four tackle for losses. They they all they all do things a little bit differently for this uh, Penn State defense here, but I think but I think uh, when you look at this Penn State defense, uh, you look you look at their one of their main main threats here, and that's Kalen King. Uh, if you remember it last year, uh, it was uh, King and oh wow, I'm drawing a blank on his um. His last, uh, last year, the uh, the stellar defensive back from last year uh, for Penn State. Um, can't believe I'm forgetting his name, but having 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 King and um, uh, yeah, and I'm going to get ripped for this one. I'm <laughs> forgetting his <laughs> I'm name. So I'm not. I'm not even sure what you're trying to get to. Um. Well, no. Last year, last year's Penn State defensive backs were really stellar, oh, and it was because Joey of Porter King. Jr. Yes, thank you, Porter, 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 and King as those two main corners were just stellar, were very stellar for Penn State last year. So King, King returns back here, and you look at his stats: only eleven tackles. That means he's doing his job, and no, and 
and no one's really throwing it to him there. So uh, very, very good defensive back in Kalen King here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, a lot of a lot of great talent on this Penn State team. Um, it's 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 going to be a game. It's going to be a game. Um, I, I I don't have a great deal of confidence necessarily about anything here. Um, and and a lot of it. And by the way, when I say I don't have a great deal of confidence about anything, I, I think there's a couple ways to read that. That's not me saying I'm not confident in Ohio State's ability to win. What I'm saying is I'm not confident in my ability to know what the hell is going to happen on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Um, Ohio State could come out and bludgeon Penn State. It it could happen. Maybe, maybe Penn State is a, is a paper lion. Um, maybe the all of these numbers are there and it looks great but then you step into the ring with a team that is not significantly more talented but more talented and you know and may, maybe Penn State gets in their head about it maybe Penn State is you know shell shocked from you know losing 10 of the last 11 uh, there's, I mean, in the one, what, six years ago, Kyle, no, no one's no one on this roster has ever beaten Ohio State. Yep. Um, maybe they walk into this game and get bludgeoned. That's a yep, thing yep. that I think could happen. I, I also think a thing that could happen is that Ohio State walks into this game and win by three or lose by three. Um maybe Notre Dame's not all that good and maybe Ohio State doesn't actually have any quality wins either. And Ohio State gets bludgeoned in this game. I, I don't I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. Um But I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen in this football game. And that's why it should be fun here. That's it should why be. it should be fun. <laughs> Alright. Uh Kyle is it a okay that was from last week uh yeah uh, time to get into our predictions sure sure let's let's roll right into it then so the the first prediction here we're going to talk about ohio state player to watch so we'll start with you jared who's who's the ohio state player to watch in this ohio state penn state matchup Ohio State players to watch. I am. I'm saying the offensive tackles, um, Fryer and Simmons. I, I think Penn State has a very good pass rush, um, and Ohio Ohio State has been spotty. Has been spotty in in pass protection. They've been better in pass protection than they have been in run protection. I don't think Ohio State's going to be able to run the ball in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, just straight up, I don't think Ohio State's going to be able to run the football in this game. Uh, Ryan Day is hopefully smart enough to just, just to quit before he gets going. Or at least well, well, loosen well, them let's, up. Let's, well, let's, let's look at that. Let's look at that then. I'm in the middle of my prediction. All right, fine, go. <laughs> I was going if, to counter that, but go. If Ohio State wants to win this game, they're going to need to pass the ball effectively. And the number one way to prevent Ohio State from passing the ball effectively is to, you know, get in the face and get in the head of Kyle McCord. And that's, you know, the edge rush is going to be the easiest way to do that. Um, So, yeah, I'm going to go with Ohio State's offensive tackles. All right. So if I go back to 2019, Ohio State ran the ball for 229 yards against Penn State. And how many of those and, offensive uh, linemen are currently on Ohio State's roster? 3.8 yards per carry. Back in 2020, Ohio State 208 yards, 4.6. And per how carry. many? How many of those offensive linemen are on the current roster? 
and 21, Ohio State ran for 161 yards, 4.7 yards per carry. And how many of those offensive linemen are currently on the roster? And then last year, then last year, Ohio State ran the ball for only 98 yards and 3.8 yards per carry. And Ohio State's offensive line hasn't gotten better since. Kyle, who's your uh, Ohio so, State offensive player to watch? Or I don't know why so I mine threw the word here, offensive in there. Ohio State player to watch. Well, well, mine is on the offensive side here. Uh, one thing, one thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some, put some numbers here. Back in 2019, or excuse me, back in 2020, Ruckert, four catches and two touchdowns. Okay. And 21, Ruckert. Had three catches of 57 yards. Last year, Stover had six catches, 78 yards, and a touchdown. So why don't I why don't I go with my boy Stover as my Ohio State player to watch? There you go. You 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 look at some of the big plays in recent memory with the Ohio State Penn State matchup here. It's it's been the tight ends here. Who who can forget the one about JT Barrett throwing it to the middle there in the fourth quarter to take the lead over Penn State. Uh, was, and last year Stover and last year Stover made some great catches, as I mentioned. Six catches, seventy-eight yards, and and a uh, touchdown for that game as well. But you could easily put in Marvin Harrison Jr. as well. Last year, he went off 10 catches, 185 yards against Penn State last year. So you could easily say Marvin Harrison Jr., but I'll go a little bit out of left field here. I'm going to, I'm going to go with the our main tight end here, Cade Stover. Kyle, guest picker this week is Austin. Um, who does he have as his Ohio State player to watch? Uh, he has... Jimmy Simmons as his player to watch. Uh, he says, I mean, it's, it's a, um, microcosm microcosm. Thank you, Jared. I was getting there <laughs> for the entire offensive line, but he's definitely been the worst. Penn state is going to come after McCord and we're going to need the blind side protected. They have good edge rushers have to be able to stop them from getting home, especially because Ohio state is going to sling it around this game. Enemy player to watch, Kyle. Who do you have? I got Kalen King. Mentioned mentioned him earlier. The the main defensive back for Penn State here. He's going to attempt to try to slow down uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. in this game. And if he's if he is able to slow him down here and have, I'd say less than five catches, like five or less catches in this game, I think that's a, that's a big win for Penn State and will mean that this game would be a lot closer than Buckeye fans will want it to be. Okay. I have a DJ King or a DJ Isaac. I, I don't know why you said King. Um, am I pronounced? How, how, how did I do in that pronunciation, Kyle? A DJ? A Disa. A Disa. A Disa. A Disa Isaac. Um, one of the best pass rushers. Uh, along with uh, Chop Robinson on this team. I mean, you, you can see the theme I'm going for. Kyle, who does Austin have? My boy Austin going also with Kalen King. Uh, he said, if I say it's going to air it out, like I think they will, he has to try to lock down Marv, especially if Ibuka and other receivers can't go full. King has to be the one to force uh, Ohio State to go to their younger and more inexperienced receivers. There you go. Key matchup, Kyle. Who do you have? It's it's got to be the same same thing that I have. It's Ohio State receivers versus versus Penn State's uh, defensive backs here. I, I agree. I agree with Austin. I think Ohio State's going to pass it a lot in this game here, and it's going to come down to if if this Penn State defense can can get can slow down this um these wide receivers here because it's <laughs> it's the best best wide receivers in the country here and can they can they stand up to the challenge yeah i have a, 
Adisa Isaac and Chop Robinson versus Josh Fryer and Josh Simmons. Uh, once again, those are the uh, main defensive ends, the main edge rushers for Penn State against Ohio State's offensive tackles. Um, again, I'm 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 on theme here. I'm not going to explain why that's my pick. Again, I've already done it, uh, but I'm I'm on theme here. Kyle, who does Austin have? He says weirdly he's going to go with the uh, linebackers versus Ohio State linebackers versus Penn State's running backs. Uh, Tommy Steele Simon against Allen Singleton and Potts. Uh, he says, but mostly the first two in each set. I think that the Ohio State secondary has done a great job of bending but not breaking. But the linebackers play play was sketchy in the last few weeks. Ohio State can contain Ohio, contain Penn State's run game and force them into obvious passing situations. I think they can win this game. All right, Kyle, here it comes. Ohio state's favored by four and a half points. Who do you have as uh, the winner against the spread? I have final score, Ohio state 35 Penn state 21. which is a cover for easily for Ohio state. I think Ohio state, if all goes well, they get their, they get their players back. Abuka comes back. Henderson comes back here. I, I think, I think Ohio state has a very good shot just because of who Ohio state has played. They, they know, they know how to play in these tough games here and Penn state just has not come up to the challenge yet. And I, I think, I think, the experience Ohio State's had so far this this season will will shine through. Yeah, I mean, is it experience or is Ohio State worn down more? Um, it's it, it's hard to say. Um, you know, iron sharpens iron, and Ohio State's you know at least been at least been to the you know to the forgery once here. Um, Penn State hasn't. You know, and Penn State practically had a bye week last week. Not that Purdue is all that great, but they're a hell of a lot better than Massachusetts. So that's another, you know, aiding factor that favors Penn State. Um, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. Um, but I, I do have Ohio State winning, and I do have Ohio State covering. Uh, I have the final score, 31 to 17. Sorry, guys. I, I couldn't keep up the bit this week. It's just not going to get anywhere. It's not going to, it's not going to, the, the number, the total is just not going to get anywhere near uh, our magic number. So uh, I, I had to break the bit this week. I, I, I couldn't do it. Uh, there, there was just, there's just no way. There's no way that the score gets anywhere near uh, our magic number. Yeah. And Austin here says the game will game being in hor in the horseshoe helps a lot. If it were at Penn State, I would take the Nittany Lions pretty easily. No matter what it feels like, it'll be a close game. But who has the edge? Home field could be that edge. Penn State though does seem to be firing on all cylinders while Hase is still sorting certain parts of their team out. I think it'll be an intriguing game throughout and I know this will be in an un, will be unpopular, but he has Penn State to win out twenty three to twenty one. Blasphemous, Austin. Blasphemous. I I don't know. I for for all of the for for all of the talk. Um, because we've been talking up Penn State. For all of the talk, I, I I'm not super impressed by their offense. And yeah, I know I I went through the stats. <laughs> uh, I went through the stats, and um, but just watching Penn State's offense, 
it, it just it doesn't strike me as a great offensive football team, if I'm being honest. Um, and <laughs> and um, the chat, the chat sometimes. Um, for for all of the numbers, for for everything, it's a. Penn State team that I I don't know has passed the offensive eyeball test for me despite all of the numbers saying that I'm wrong and the numbers for the record say that I'm wrong Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know I I don't know that they're as locked in solid a, a football team as the numbers might suggest I agree I agree. All right. So speaking of Austin here, Jared, he has our our weekly uh, Austin over unders here. So he's going to start off with McCord passing yards at two hundred eighty-seven and a half. Big number think, against he, a good defense. I mean, that's doubling. The Penn State, the uh, the Penn State, uh, given up. I I'm sorry. the The website is is having issues. There we go. Uh, yeah. Uh, Penn State is currently allowing. What was the number? A hundred and thirty seven yards per game. Uh, so, much more than doubling up, the average, passing yards given up. Um, God, that just feels like a big number. I'm going to have to go under. Yeah, I I think so too. That's, that's just a, that's just a big number, but I mean, I say he hasn't done that bad last year. Stroud 354 yards the year before that Stroud had 305 fields had 318 the year before that. It's not 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 unrealistic here, but I, I I will I will take the under though in this one. Right, the next over under is Kalen Kings has four and a half interceptions and tackles combined. Didn't you say he only has how many tackles 11. on eleven tackles, 11 tackles on the season? Mm, gonna gonna have to go under there. You know, to go kind of with my theme, or not my theme, but to kind of go along with what I said about having to keep Marvin Harrison under a certain amount. It, I think that he'll he has a chance to to go over that. So I'm actually going to go over. On this one, just because I think, I think they'll try to get the ball to Marvin Harrison, which King will be guarding, and so he'll have more opportunities for tackles. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Ohio State's going to do everything they can to get Marvin away from King as as well. Line him up in different positions. Line him up on the other side of the field. Um, you know, you run him on drag routes and stuff like that. Or they might use Marvin as a decoy, especially if EE plays, which I believe we're expecting him to. But then again, we were expecting Henderson to play last week, and he didn't. So who knows? Yep. Next one here is Ohio State's um, defensive tackles having three and a half tackle for losses. Um, I'm going to guess he means... Um, and sacks. Yes, or in here. I'm going to assume three and a half tackle for losses and sacks. I mean, he says or. And he's not in here to defend himself here, so. (laughs) Uh, Tackles for loss or sacks. Not and sacks, or sacks. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll go under then, if that's the case. Yeah. I'll go under. I will too. Um, I it, it just I think it'll be a difficult thing to get 
Spe- specifically from a position group, it's going to be a difficult number to achieve. I'm going to go under. Yeah. Our total pass attempts, 26 and a half. Now, that's something I haven't really looked at. How many How many passing attempts? Quickly trying to pull this up in splits here. Uh, passing how many attempts has he had? He th- so, um, pass uh, completion yards pass passes per game 32.8 that's Penn State as a whole though um, yeah so but... look, looking here so the past couple games 23 attempts 33 37 33 and then 26 and 29 to start this season so kind of the middle middle so far he's passed for more than 30 times here and I, I think he's going to have to pass it more so I'm I'm gonna get. I'll go uh, over on this one. I wonder if it's part of Penn State's strategy to shorten the game. It could be. It could be. So that would, you know, de- that would lean us towards under all across the board here. Penn State might go run heavy and try to eat some clock and run the game out. It's a distinct possibility. Um, I think it's, I kind of think it's what Penn State's going to try and do. So I'm going to go under here as well. Okay. All right. The next one here is Ohio State touchdown scored by freshman wide receivers or Dalen, Dallin Hayden at one and a half. Uh, under. Yep. I'm going to go under as well. If it was uh, and, Burke, I'd have thought about it. Or yeah, Burke, or, yeah, Burke or Igbenosin combined interceptions and pass breakups at three and a half. The pass breakups, for as often as I think we think they happen, they're actually Doesn't. statistically awarded not very often. Um, like. Yeah, I'm going to go under on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can... I think they each look. had one last week, for reference. I think they so each had look, one. And Ty Leak yeah, had so two. So if I'm looking... Igbenosin has a total of three pass breakups for the year. And Burke... Burke has seven. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to go under. And you said under as well? Yeah. Okay. And the last one is Penn State's rushing yards. 143 and a half yards is his over under. They are averaging, if I look up here, they're averaging 203.3 yards per game. My numbers say 181, but my, my, site but, does not count FCS games as a part of averages so that's the that's the difference so with my site takes FCS games out of the averages which brings that you know like I said down to about 180 um, I'm going to go under um you know, I think Ohio State. I think Ohio State will be better. Um, you know, again, if the average is one eighty, I think Ohio State is is better than forty yards against the average against this terrible schedule that Penn State has played. Yeah, if I look at one of their games here against Northwestern, who's not a good team here. Uh, they rushed for 134 yards. What about Iowa? Against Northwestern. Uh, against Iowa, they rushed it, well, they rushed it 57 times to get 215 yards. 3.8 yards per carry in that, in that game. So let's just say if Ohio State's holding them to, let's just say that 3.8 yards per carry, and they're running it 25 times. Let's just say 25 times that they're able to run it. That's not a hundred yards. That's not a hundred yards uh, a game here. So, 
They average I, Kyle, I, they average rushing the ball 41 times a game. Not against Ohio State, they won't be. I agree. Be. I agree because, <laughs> you know, it's easier. Well, I'll say it's easier to hey. run the ball 41 times a game where if you're getting a bunch of three and outs, controlling the clock, yada, yada, yada. If they're even running it 30 times at 3.8 yards per carry, that's still 114 yards. I'm, I'm going to go under. I, I was about to say over here, but I, I convinced myself to <laughs> to say I under help? now. So Did I help? Uh, maybe a little bit, but okay. I'm going to go right. under. All right, Kyle. Um, that's it. Uh, that That is our Penn State, Ohio State preview. Um. I'm going to encourage everyone to come check out the Discord server. Uh, we will uh, not be streaming uh, the Ohio State game. We will not be doing that. Uh, I think the current uh, social screen vote has us playing, or rather watching, the evening games this week, which are pretty stacked. By far. <laughs> the evening games are pretty stacked. Um, and if you want to hear us talk about some of those evening games, three of those evening games, as a matter of fact, uh, tune in to the Sloop Picks, uh, which will be released on Friday. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Mid-season All-Americans been announced here. Only one player for Ohio State has been named uh, a mid-season All-American. No, it is not Marvin Harrison Jr. No, it is not uh, Burke. The it is Tyleek man. Williams. It is Tyleek Williams. Oh, Burke's been robbed. I'll say it. Does someone need to say it? I'll say it. Burke got robbed. I, I think Marvin Harrison got robbed too. Uh, you, you can't. You can't. You can't tell me. Look, you. If you're actually watching the games here, you can't it's tell a, me it's that. It's a statistical award. It's a statistical award. That's, that's what it is. It's it's fine. So you're telling me Missouri's Luther Burden. No, I'm not. I'm telling you it's a statistical award. LSU's and that I'm not going Malik to. Neighbors. He, he is really good. Um, but I'm telling not you Marvin it's a Harrison statistical. Good. No, he's not. Uh, but I'm telling you it's a statistical award and it doesn't matter. That's what I'm telling you. Marvin Harrison will be the first wide receiver taken in the draft because he's the best wide receiver in college football. No one is arguing any of that. Do you have anything right, else in Kyle's corner? That is it. I will save the next one for for next episode. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by the Raging Nathans. Uh, Raging Nathans are a punk band out of the Dayton area. I say not sure, uh, but I think that's the case. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Raging Nathans. Mm-hmm.